Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing a book that I won in the giveaway quite a while ago and I was planning to read it but because it's part of a series I initially wanted to savour it until um, I had all the books in the series that, that way I could binge the entirety of it. But without knowing whether I was going to like the series or not, that's probably a risky thing to actually do. So because this month I am reviewing books about vampires, I thought, yeah, it's got vampire in the title. Um, what better book can I actually pick? So this one is called More Than a Vampire by J.R. Carroll. He does have a, have a um, YouTube channel. Uh, it could be just his name, I can't remember. I'll have it linked down below. Um, but I, as I said, I won this in the giveaway. I won a, a, a free paperback copy. That's a signed copy. Um, I, don't have it with, I don't have it with me right, right now. Um, but um, I will have a picture of it on the screen. And um, also it came with a bookmark and a sticker. Um, I always intended to use the bookmark while reading this copy and the sticker I just thought well you know what better place to put it on the back of the bookmark itself. So this is going to be uh, my own spoiler free video and this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book. So initially I thought that this was going to be a horror book. But I had suspicions that it was going to be a dark fantasy. I don't really like reading dark fantasy as they seem to be more um, trying to be dark and edgy and epically failing. But this book is a, um, isn't a strict horror. It's more of, a, as I said, a dark fantasy with elements of horror sprinkled throughout because it's about because it's about vampires and obviously it's got to be about horror you know a little bit so JR sent me a clip I nearly forgot that I had it so before I go any further let's just play that clip um, and um, JR will tell you a little bit about his book thank you David for picking up more than a vampire more than a vampire was my first novel in the more than human universe. I followed that up with More Than a Gunslinger, a standalone Western fantasy, which is heavily based off of the American tall tales. Now within my universe of novels, all mythology, all folklore, all the creatures that you have heard of are real. They all exist just underneath the reality of our civilization and a lot of them run parts of our civilization if you happen to pick up more than a vampire and you like it you do not have to wait long for the second book in what is called the unbreakable trilogy it is more than a god war and it is coming out this october so I hope you all love it, and I can't wait to see what David thought about the book. Back to you, David. So I will have all the information I can um, about J.R. Carroll linked, uh, linked down below. Um, a lot of it will be from the back of his book, and uh, I'll also link his YouTube channel down there below as well. So, More Than a Vampire is... Uh, set in a uh, kind of a um, real life version of our world but slightly different and it focuses around Dracula when he is going around recruiting people to be part of his uh, gang I would say he's very selective and he goes around picking people to be part of his little tr um, troop and in the end they are all assigned uh, to be responsible for different areas of planet earth so they are all responsible for 
different countries and different regions and these groups are called Kabuls. Now <clears throat> these Kabuls don't really trust each other, they kind of um, keep themselves a lot but they do meet every now and then and our main character is called Simon who is a vampire himself. Now Simon is a um, warrior, he has this massive sword and his job is to hunt down rogue vampires and basically kill them and get rid of them and uh, that's what he does. Um, Simon as a uh, character, he is a very good character, he's um, I mean he is a monster so do expect there to be loads of killing within this book he um e even though he technically is a nice person he isn't afraid to rip someone's throat out and you know go all bloodthirsty on them simon comes across a woman called linna so, so like linda but drop the d uh linna is a very um charming and a beautiful woman who Simon instantly falls in love with and vice versa and they form a very tight relationship with each other and yes they are romantically involved with each other and Simon uh, kind of tells her slash us the reader about his life I've got to put the camera down now guys I'm um, around residential uh, houses and I don't want to film someone's house so, um, Simon is telling her and the reader about Dracula and uh, his um, life and um, all sorts of um, occurrences that are happening. Uh, it's kind of going through the motions. But he kind of, I mean, there isn't really one overall um, you know, plot point or mission that the um that simon has to accomplish but it's more about him going on individual separate missions to um accomplish his goal if that made any sense at all so it's kind of more like uh sub submissions uh hopefully that didn't didn't sound too wrong so in this book it is uh kind of um yeah, uh, you're inhabited by different magical and uh, mystical creatures such as werewolves, trolls, ogres, um, what else? I'm probably going to miss a few. Um, mythical gods, or, you know, like Greek, um, Greek gods, and um, stuff like that. And um, all these, uh, and uh, also wizards as well. Uh, magic is a big part of this book. Sorry, I have to be careful about where I'm stepping. Um, and um, all these creatures, they know about each other, um, but, um, yeah, I like how they uh, in interact with each other. And also a little uh, fun thing that I just realised now that they don't all seem to be, like, monstrous beings, you know, with these, like, yeah, rage-filled uh, monsters that are out for blood all the time. They are just people they just look a bit different uh, I've just realized that now the relationship between Simon and Linda is very sweet but they don't spend all their time with each other because they are both members of different cabals and then different cabals don't come together or mix up that well and um, <clears throat> so that results in them being apart for the majority of this book, but they uh, come together a, a, a handful of times, and um, ultimately, Lina's leader is completely um, obsessed about her being a spy and um, Simon being a spy as well, and uh, trying to bring her down in her power. And um, 
this results in Lina and Simon being in prisons and somewhat tortured. And um, yeah, um, I'm trying to think about stuff to say. I don't really want to say too much because this is a book that you have to read for yourself. I don't really want to give too much stuff away. Um, hopefully I've given you enough to gauge whether this is going to be your thing or not. Overall, I enjoyed the book. The, the whole feel seems to, lot, um, to be a lot about um, The Witcher. Simon is a lot, uh, um, you know, a lot like Geralt from The Witcher, if you have remembered his name right. And because he fights with a um, sword all the time, vampires fight with swords, but they do use their teeth, obviously, and be a, a traditional vampire. But they are extremely strong, fast, agile, and good with a sword. So in that case, so in that way, it reminded me a lot about The Witcher. And I suppose, sort of because Simon is telling us a bit about his life, it's kind of like um, Interview with a Vampire, sort of, but not really. So you would think that I would have really enjoyed this book, thinking, oh my god, this is epic. But I just thought it was simply okay. It wasn't uh, the best thing that I've read um, about vampires this month, and it's certainly not the worst. But I think the, ma the uh, main thing about this book is that I expected it to be pure horror, and uh, being a um, subscriber to JR's channel, he talks all the time about fantasy, and I know that's what he's into. So this book is kind of an example about how people kind of think that vampires are fantasy beings and belong in fantasy books. Um, I strongly did di uh, disagree with that. Um, you know, with that same logic, I could say that any book that has dragons and aliens in it, because they are strictly monster creatures, I could say that they are horror books. But um, it was okay, it was a good book. Um, it did drag a little bit in, in places. Um, <clears throat> but it was an entertaining read. Um, some chapters did drag more than others. But it was an interesting read and I'm pleased that I read it. Uh, am I gonna be reading the rest of the series? Now, I was contemplating whether I should have this as a one and done type of thing because um, I wasn't really um, like massively falling in love with this book. I just think I just thought it was okay. But there were instances and moments where I generally was interested in this book and it generally um, picked up and got exciting. So, um, I, so I would say. I'm interested in reading, you know, at least reading the next book in the series, not committing to the whole of the series straight away, but I'm interested in reading the next book in the um, series to see what I think about it and uh, take it from there. It's, it's kind of a perfect balance between character development and um, plot points and storyline. Usually I can like tell whether a um, writer is more of a character um, driven writer or a plot driven writer. But I think JR is really a slightly leaning over towards the character side of the spectrum. So what I'm going to rate this book, I was tempted to give it a, a middle of the road score, a two and a half stars and an average uh, rating. But I think I am going to round it up to a three stars because uh, I did get some enjoyment and entertainment out of this book. Yes, it wasn't what I expected it to be, but such is life. So let me know how you read this book. Uh, what, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? And of course, have you been um, interested in what I have said as it piqued your curiosity to pick this book up and give it a chance and give it a read and um yeah uh with all that out of the way i just want to say um lastly thank you jr for um 
sending me this book. I know it wasn't a um, strictly a um, one of the usual author um, author request videos I do, where an author voluntarily sends me their book. Uh, I actually won this in the giveaway, but uh, I'm glad that I read it and uh, give your um, series a chance. Um, as I said, this is book one out of company three books in the series, and they're all continuous in this uh, series. What I will say about what I um, quickly about what I liked and disliked. Um, I guess I liked the fighting scenes in this book. I liked it when Simon was fighting people with swords and uh, going all vampire on them. Um, but I suppose the only thing I really disliked is that um, it seemed to throw everything in there but the kitchen sink. There seemed to be loads of creatures um, you know, in this book that um, it just seems a bit overwhelming at times if that's even the right way for me to describe it um, as I said it's not strictly a dislike I didn't I didn't really, really dislike it it's just that it seems to be less focused I suppose that's the best way for me to put it rather than focusing on mostly the vampires it seems to be um, including every single creature that you could possibly imagine but as I just said it's not really much of a complaint it's the only dislike I can really think about so yeah I better stop it off here guys uh, lastly I just want to um, thank JR once again for um, sending me this copy and um, please go over and check his YouTube channel out he's a very um, entertaining person and I like his videos a lot. So yeah, uh, with all that out of the way guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.